counter, but you desperately need your signatures on them. <laughs> Good morning. There's that moment when you don't have hearing in the one side and you have it on the other and you're like, is the bell ringing or not? This is, I guess, the, what you get for let's make America great and all that stuff and going out into the world and keeping democracy and all those kinds of good things. I guess it comes at some kind of press. So good morning to each and every one of you. Thank you so much for coming here today. I invite you, if you will, to open up your bulletins to the quiet meditation that's printed inside. Today's quiet meditation comes from St. Oscar Romero. St. Oscar Romero had served as the bishop in South America, and as serving as bishop, he was actually assassinated for his desires in trying to bring freedom and democracy, justice and humanity to the people of the nation that he served. And so we hear these words, and very clearly I ask you to listen. He says, I don't want to be anti against anybody. I simply want to be the builder of a great affirmation. The affirmation of God who loves us and who wants to save us. And for those powerful words I ask, how do we know to not be 
in one side or the other. And we know because we stand with Christ. Not this team or that team, but simply with Christ. And it's Richard Rohr who reminds us to dig deep into our souls and be aware that we are grandparents. He says grandparents can trust life because they have seen more of it than their younger people have, and they can trust death because they are closer to it. Something has told them along the way that who they are is now and never the final stage. And this one isn't either. That as we move closer to God, we recognize the peace and the safety. We recognize that things aren't always unfolding as they should be, but we trust our faith. And so this morning I asked during the quiet meditation and prayer that we become abundantly aware of what it means to be not anti-anyone. Do not to be against anybody, but to instead this day pause and reflect, pray and meditate that we are a part of building a great affirmation, the affirmation of a God who loves us and wants to save us, not some us that's outside these doors, not some us that's sometimes within these doors, but an us that when you close your eyes, you see your sorrow and say, the God who saves us is the God who saves me. Jesus, who is our life. We thank our Lord who makes us whole. Here we are welcome and loved and cherished. Here we are people of God. Let us rejoice and give God praise. Amen. Uh, please join me in the hymn number 445, Happy the Home Where God Is There.
open our hearts and minds to the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. May God's Spirit be here, leading us toward a more mature faith, nurturing our hope and embracing us in love. May we be persons of love and reconciling peace. In the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Amen. And now would you join me in the hymn number 432, Jesus, Jesus. children who are interested or are willing to take on the adventure for children's time. I forgot the little microphone. It's supposed to have a little microphone. So any kids want to come up? I haven't bit anybody. I'm just going to read a book and I'm going to give you some cookies. How about the cookies? I'll go with you. Want me to go with you? I'll go with you. I said this is a book. It's actually a coloring book, right? And all it simply says is thank you, Jesus, for making me special. Now, if you're special, raise your hand. Uh, I'm on, but God makes each and every one of us thank you, Rich, for being a part of my uh, program. Kind of right. It's all special, all beautiful, and all perfect. And so this book, right, is talks about praying. What makes us special, right? And so when you're a little kid, you're going to grow up. That makes you special, right? Right. Right till about 16, and then that's probably enough, right? That's good, right? You don't want to get too big, right? Just big enough to be able to, like, you know, go on a swing. Has anybody swing? Anybody go on a swing? Awesome. Good deal. Go on to your house. And then this one says, thank you that Jesus can make me help mommy. Does anybody help mommy? Wow. Right, right. Anybody help daddy? Yeah, same as my house. Nobody. Good. So here we go. He says, thank you. Oh, this says thank you for, help, for help, letting me help daddy. Anybody wash the car? 
take out the garbage, make your beds, anything else you need done, just let this is nice, right? And then you have your own jobs. Thank you for making me special so that I can help clean up after myself. I won't ask. <laughs> Ew. Yeah, no. Wait, oh, does anybody have a pet? Anybody have a dog or a cat? Something like that? Guinea pig? Anything like that? This says thank you for making me care for my pets, right? And does anybody run fast? Any fast runners? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, that I can run fast and jump high. My body is growing big and strong. And so it continues to go to all these things that reminds us about how important it is to be aware that we are made special. That God loves us so very, very much, right? He cares for us and helps us grow. And so we are reminded to take some time here and there, maybe even every day, to just say thanks. Does that sound like an okay thing? All right. So let's let's have some cookies. All right, here we go. Now I've got a bunch, so everybody gets one. So would you take one past one down? Take one past one down. Here we go. And then later on you can mix and match and share or trade as you will, like you do it. No one ever trades their lunch away at the lunch, right? You don't do that anymore. I don't like this sandwich when you got. Oh, we're all good on this side. Keep passing this way. <coughs> wow, thank you very much, Alfred. Great, there you go. All right, you want that? Oh, two more. You know, you, Jeffrey, you're here. I thought maybe you were home with me. All right, so Susan here. Rich toss. <laughs> Jeff in the back. Don't show. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm down to my lap. You guys have got to split these. <laughs> all right, next day. <laughs> all right, let's pray before we go, all right? My Lord God, I ask your blessing today on these children, ambassadors to the kingdom of heaven. Remind them always that they are special, not just in your eyes, but in the eyes of the world. Let them know that they are loved, that I love them too. They head out into the world with his joy in their heart this time and always. Amen. All right, take that. We're going to do a baptism. So you guys are all going to go to Kids Zone. So Brianna and uh, Madison. Where's Brianna and Madison? They're downstairs. Do you need them now? Yeah, I think you need to like. So if you're going to go to Kids Zone, right? Because the sermon's not that exciting. <laughs> I was reading it this morning. I was writing it this morning. Who am I kidding? So, uh, so if you want to get down and do some activities, that would be great. <coughs> There's no more cookies. Did we lose Maddie and uh, Rihanna? Are we ready for the baptism? While well, we're transitioning and finding Sunday school, why don't we come on up? Everyone's going to be involved in the baptism. And that could be the, the entire uh, family. So here is, here is Maddie and here's Brianna. Wave high. So if you want to go to uh, Kid Zone, which is like not Sunday school because who wants to go to school any more days of the week than Monday through Friday, you can go down and hang out with them. They're going to have some fun activities and stuff like that. All right? I don't know if we get to or not. Come on, come on. They won't bite you. This is the part of the field of dads. I've messed this up and done it right about 500 times. So my goal is that after that, it's all good. All right, here we go. If you want to follow along, we're on page 39. In the hymnal, all right? But you don't have to, you can sit back, relax, and enjoy, okay? Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. And so today, parents, 
who do we present for baptism? Michael Chiquini the third. All right. On behalf of the whole church, I'm going to ask you some questions, and you just have to answer. I hope I do. You might have had practice with this. I don't know. Here we go. Do you? That's a little bit of a joke. You can smile. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? Say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, Will you nurture? Oh, he's giving me a smile. Um, I lost my face. He's so excited. In Christ's holy church, that you, by your teachings and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. Say, I will. Well. Now, this is for everybody, right? Because we're all in this together. And I say that because, like, when they need a day off, they're calling you. A diaper changing, you're up to bat. A sleepover, it's all of us. I should say just you, it's us. Anytime. Come on over. We'll have some junk food. Right? Okay? Yeah. Here we go. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If you answer this, say we do. Will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life? And include Michael uh, now before you in your cares. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Michael with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. And let us all join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, O my Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And so folks sometimes ask me about um, baptism, like why do we baptize children? You know, because they ask that baptism is what clear clears us from sin, and, and, and what could Michael have been done already? He's, you know, his biggest sin might have been, you know, throwing up or something like that. So what are we doing? And they say, so do you believe in original sin? And I say, yes, but please hold on. You see, the Bible doesn't start with the story of Adam and Eve. Instead, it starts with God's creation to all the world. And each time God creates the world, God says, it is good. Until he comes to humanity. And when he comes to humanity, he says, I create you very good. But then what happens is we go out into the world and we hear a never-ending story of us not looking good. Right? And if you can imagine ourselves or yourself or me, we look in the mirror and find all the reasons why the world says that we are not. Right? This morning, I looked in the mirror and I said, oh my goodness, where did my hair go? In, top, in addition to that, I saw like, you know, the wrinkles and, and you know, things are not looking so great. And so some people even are braver than having a bath mirror and have a full-length mirror, which only I think is more terrifying. But if we can imagine seeing ourselves as God sees our sees each and every one of us, through a lens that sees that you and I and all of us are beautiful, that we are magnificent, that there is something about each and every one of us that, yes, is not only special, but beautiful and important. 
cherished, beloved. And so maybe this water washes the lens by which we see the world and reminds us of, of as Richard Rohr says, our inherent dignity. You are royal. So is he. And so as we baptize this day, I pray that you are reminded of your goodness, your glory, of your grandeur, God's love. Wash that fresh, that lens that says human dignity comes because I am created. So, oh my gosh, we're going to pull this off. We're going to pour some water. Would you be so kind as to pour the water for the other It's very holy water. I'm going to write for the St. Peter's Church. <laughs> And so we begin to pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth life. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to stand to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all the nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all his people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it to wash away their sin, to clothe them in righteousness through their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you in the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns forever.
vibration of the light by which you carry for this child. I remind you that that energy all in your hands must remain lit and fresh. Parents of God, parents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. This child has been enlightened by Christ. He is to walk always as a child of the light. May you keep the flame of faith alive in his heart, and when the Lord comes, may he go out to meet him and all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. And may you be a part of that. Members of the household of God, I commend Michael to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect his love. And say, may the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and establish and strengthen us by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may live in grace and peace this day and always. We go now forward. sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, 
Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from here to us, he said. Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, Neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks to God. Amen. Could you please be seated? Thank you so much, Terry. Of course, I ask, the first time Terry's going to read, it's for a baptism, the longest reading in the history of the gospel readings, and a bunch of people. And the church is long. <laughs> Thank you. So, thank you. Let us pray. May the words of our lips and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. While it may not seem obvious to all of you, today's uh, scripture reading, both the, uh, the epistle and the gospel, seem to me like a great opportunity to talk about a 1980s movie. And so as I sat and prayed and prepared this day for this sermon, I thought about all that was going on. I thought about the, the prophetic words of Amos, and I heard about how it seemed like he was wagging his finger at us. And I heard of the words of Jesus in the gospel describing just the same. And I thought to myself, Here's a great opportunity for me to stand in the pulpit and shame people, to make them feel uncomfortable, if you will, to make them feel as if they've done something wrong, because I know if I make you feel bad about yourself, I will certainly help you change your ways. That's like uh, satire? <laughs> of course I'm not going to talk about that, because I don't think that works, and I don't think that that lands for people. No, instead, I think that this story, when I stand back away from it and I hear about Jesus talking about how this person's being stepped over every day, I think about the people who, from in Amos' time, were working and desiring to get bigger and richer and better. It's a story about the desire to be loved. Because we all want to be loved. Deep down within our hearts, we have this experience that we want to be loved and we want to love other people. Which reminds me of the movie Coming to America. And in Coming to America, we hear this story about a man who comes from Africa to the United States and moves into Queens to find, quote unquote, his queen. And so when he finally finds her, after working laboriously for many years for her father, not at McDonald's, but McDowell's, a knockoff, if you will, he walks back and he begins singing out proudly and thrilled. He's singing this song from um, Jackie Wilson, To Be Loved. He says, someone to care, someone to share, the lonely hours and moments of despair, to be loved, to be loved. Oh, that feeling to be loved. And of course, it's about midnight in Queens in the 80s, and everyone rips open their windows and starts screaming, shut up. You see, that is really what we're in this conflict for when it comes to love today in the gospel reading, in the words of Amos, and in Paul's epistle to Timothy. You see, there is this great desire in our hearts to be loved. And so in a story about the gospel reading, we learn that it's Hezekiah, a wealthy person who steps over the beggar every day. But we don't pause to think about why Hezekiah has become so rich. He's become rich to be loved. 
because we know that it wasn't just in the 20th and 21st century that the question is, is it better to be feared than to be loved? No, he recognized that the more he had, the more boisterous he was, the more famous, the more accolades, the more wealth, others would love him. And he sets the standard by which we are often called to do that across the arc of history. And it is not new to the time and season of Jesus that this is happening. You know, Amos, who talks about this even before the Israelites are exiled, says that the growth of wealth and all these other things and the desire to be loved is not the answer. No, he says the desire to be loved comes from a rich, meaningful expression to care for others and to be cared. And that, that is exactly what Paul tries to communicate to us as he writes that letter to Timothy in the epistle. You see, Timothy's living in the city of Ephesus, and it is a city that is thriving. And it would be very easy for Timothy to be attracting members to his uh, church, which is not really doing great by being like wealthy and famous and rich and powerful. He says to them that this is not the great way to go. He says, instead, Paul writes, that I ask you to be humble, that I ask you to be gentle, that I ask you to love. Which brings me back to the movie, Coming to America. You see, there is this sense, right, that the prince can remain in his hometown and live in all the accolades live in all the posh luxury, but there's something missing in his heart, and that is to be loved. He recognizes that the wife that his parents have chosen for him will only love him as a duty, will only love him because she has to. And I know that that's not the kind of love we want to have in our lives. We want the kind of love that when someone sees us, we are lit up. The old story goes, I want you to love me so much that you're looking at my text messages on the phone and you walk into a tree. I want you to love me so much that it's distracting and it draws me in and draws you in in a way that I'm willing to mop the floors at McDonald's even though I can be a king. It is in that space. It is in that pause. It is in these moments that we become aware about what it means to love and to be loved. We are each earnest to be loved, whether we like it or not, whether we'll admit it or not. We want to be in a loving relationship. And that looks like a relationship with other human beings, and it looks like a relationship with God. And so when Paul offers these words, he offers them in humility, saying to each and every one of us, to be loved, to be loved, to be really loved, means to be righteous and godly. It means to demonstrate your faith. It means that maybe you've got to cross a lot of oceans and land, demonstrating endurance to be loved. It is a gentleness of your body soul and mind to be loved. And so he says to us to fight the good fight. To love with reckless abandon so that we may be loved in reckless abandon. To take hold of the eternal life which is not the eternity of standing online at the department 
the transportation. Or when you're waiting online with that favorite toy at Walmart. It's an eternity that we wish never ends. When we hold a baby in our arms. I'll tell you what, there is a, this much space between me going, I'm hitting the door because I don't get to hold a baby very often. And you put it back. That eternity is the eternity that Paul points out to each and every one of us and says, embrace it, to be loved, to truly be loved. And so may we confess with hearts filled with witness the words that Paul says to Timothy, those words that find their place on the front of your bulletin, to be in love, to truly be in love, is to choose God and choose the world in its goodness and challenge, its heartache and suffering, but to be between the two difficulties of life and choose to truly be in love. Amen. I remember it was here somewhere. And this time I ask you, uh, we're going to pause for our um, time of celebrations and Concerns, a time where we share our prayers. Uh, I have some here first. Uh, this is for Diane uh, and her uh, that her cancer came back. So let's please lift up our sister Diane in prayer. Let us lift up uh, Daniel's family. I uh, mean, Daniel is in the hospital right now, and so we lift those folks up in prayer. We lift lift up um, the Slate family uh, who lost their daughter. Um, we lift up um, our sister Lynn, who, um, who uh, has got some concerns with her health and she has some tests coming up. We celebrate um, the 40th wedding anniversary of Jean and Curtis. We uh, lift up our brother Keith, whose dad is in the hospital. And so are there any other prayer concerns that we have? This day? For Katie's new treatment. Jesse and her Uh, brother Frank, who passed away uh, last year, he would have been 74. Okay. 74 today. <clears throat> oh. uh, for Matthew Shaw, who's undergoing radiation treatment. For Matthew and his radiation treatment. Yeah. And if we can continue our prayers for little Jasmine, who's still experiencing health issues. For Jasmine, for Jasmine and her health issues. Jimbo, sorry, I'm getting there, buddy. Concern for Len and Susan. For Len and Susan. Okay. There's two of them. Uh, yes, thank you, Heather. Uh, Lisa and Cheryl. For Lisa and Cheryl. Okay, thank you so much, Heather. Mary Rowan. 
for our sister Mary and her family. For the family of uh, Bill Lee. Bill passed this week. For the family of Bill. <coughs> Both of which passed away this week. And Isabel Rome. Isabel, yes, absolutely. In, celebra uh, in celebration of our new baptism. Yeah. Hold on, I'm just writing it um, for Isabel, um, her son passed. Okay, go ahead, Heather. Uh, for the hurricane victims. Hurricane victims. I think someone said that, but I didn't get that written down. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. It's Frank. You should see this paper. In my hand, it's cool. not what it used to be. <laughs> and it to be I signed something, and someone said, Oh my gosh, are you a doctor? And I was like, Not that kind. So <laughs> let us. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, absolutely, the birth of Sharon, right? Right, Jeff? How good, thank you so much. You look like you're so red, it's great. <laughs> it's just tired, it's, it's all right, it's good. Thank you so much. Right. Oh yeah, Jeff and Hannah had a baby daughter on Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday, right? Yeah, I'm saying her, her name is Sharon Joy. Sharon Eleanor. Sharon Eleanor. Sharon Eleanor. So that's pretty exciting news. So we can't wait to see um, Sharon Eleanor come in. Awesome. So let us take a moment to pray. My Lord God, we lift up the prayer concerns of this community and join the prayer concerns of those around the world. We lift up in celebration um, the birth of Sharon, the 40th wedding anniversary of Jean and Curtis, the baptism of Michael. We lift up um, with hearts and prayer for those with health concerns like Diane and her cancer and Daniel, who's also in the hospital. We lift up families with losses, like this, the loss of Alana, Mary and Bill and Isabel and their families as they suffer the grief and sadness and loss. We celebrate and honor those who have gone before us in these days, and we ask that they continue to grow. We ask that those who are suffering know your goodness, God and feel your comfort. The comfort of Frank's family and missing him on his 7th, 4th birthday. We lift up Matthew and all his challenges and difficulties. We lift up our brother Lou and our sister Arlene as they recover from COVID. And we lift up Carol. We lift up Craig and Raina as they suffer and struggle with medical needs. God, we ask that those medical um, leaders, the doctors and nurses care for them. In sadness, we offer up the Egan's and their loss of their sister. We pray that for Katie, the new treatment helps her. And we lift up our brother Keith as his dad is sick in the hospital. We ask for strength and courage for those hurricane victims who struggle during these difficult times. We lift up Jasmine, and we lift up Lynn. We lift up Jesse and her family, and Bobby and Mike. We lift up all those who have been offered this day in prayer. Lord, there are those who um, we just don't have it on our hearts and lips to speak about, and we ask that their blessing be found upon them. We lift them up as a congregation, as a community, as those who follow Christ. We ask this all in your name, O oh Lord. Amen. 
If anyone thinks that someone is the community cross, by all means, please come see me after the church and take that there. Um, at this time, we pause for a moment of tithes and offerings, uh, a time to, uh, to pause and be reflective of our treasures and times that we offer to this church so that we may remain in ministry and mission um, locally and around the world. And our ushers will be brought. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. God of glory, amen. Turning now to the great thanksgiving on page 13. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which you gave yourself up for us, you took bread, you gave thanks, you broke it, you gave it to your disciples and said, Take, eat this, all of you. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this as often as you come together in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, you took the cup, you gave thanks, you gave it to your disciples and said to them, Take, drink, all of you. This is my blood. The blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you come together in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ is will to come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, God, and here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God to the people of God. All are welcome at this table. Because people have different needs at different seasons of their lives, we have different, different options. The first is single serve, right? So if you want single serve, um, we have just really, you know, a privilege about having all of you here. We're also having other people who uh, were, were clergy in the past and remain uh, clergy members. And so, Carol, would you be so kind as to help me with this to do the, um, the single serve communion? Would you come? Yeah. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Carol's a chaplain, uh, a hospice chaplain. So she's going to come. And so, if you want single serve, uh, please come up and, and see Carol. And we'll go right here. All right. Steve, oh, uh, brother? No, not. Yeah, okay. Not today. Um, let's see. Who else? I'm looking for someone. This just seems pretty bad. You want to give me a hand? Come on over. Yeah, sure. So some folks I uh, also get to uh, gluten. So we have gluten-free wafers. Right? And so, Carol, you can just move over like four sure. steps. Put it in your hand, we do it by attention, we dip it in the cup, right?
rise as you're able and join me in our final hymn. It's number 428 for the healing of the nations, number 428. Just the first verse, just the first verse. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 